What is up, YouTube? Card Games United, back for another set review, which is only extremely late. This time we are talking about good old VBT-05 Aerial Steed Liberation. Any initial thoughts, guys? What? Uh, yeah, I've got some thoughts. Oh. Dance a lot is trash. Definitely. Second in. Well, first. perhaps that would be a good time to move into the first part of the set review. Uh, VBT 05001 Solitary Knight Gancelot. Yeah, just hurry up and make Solitary Liberator Gancelot already. No, fuck this card. This card gets a right. 1 out of 5. So, what this card does, Grade 3, Royal Paladin, 13k power, Imaginary Gift, Force, uh, Continuous, Vanguard, all your Blaster Blade, get 10k power. Continuous, Vanguard, during your turn, if your opponent's Vanguard is Grade 3 or greater, your front row circles with blaster blades on them become vanguard circles. Thoughts? Fuck this card. This card gets a 1 out of 5 from me. And here's why. It is absolutely poorly designed because it requires you to specifically have blaster blade. Alright. And there are multiple reasons as to why this is bad because it makes your deck incredibly inconsistent. I don't care if we got Tristan... Or we have Conjurer of Mithril, which can act as extra copies of Blaster Blade. The fact of the matter is that you require this one specific bad grade 2, and then this card, which doesn't have a searcher. So this deck is incredibly prone just to fall apart because you do not have any of the pieces that you need. And because Gantzlaw is not named an Alfred, you can't even pair another grade 3 with this that's actually even remotely effective. Making your dick even more prone to bricking. Did you say deck? Making your dick more prone to bricking. <laughs> your dick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sure... You totally said dick right there. Yeah, um, I'm sure your dick would break if it, uh, up. you know. Alright. Like, if Blaster Blade was actually a good rear guard, fine. But, like, the only thing it has uh, going if Blaster Blade was a good vanguard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's that, too. You can't eat, like, with this card, you also have to choose between whether you want the one Blaster Blade to have a crit, or whether you have the one Blaster, if you want the two Blaster Blades to have drive checks. But let's be honest here, even with drive checks, they're only 28k attacks. You're still blocking off them. Can I weigh yeah. in here? Sure. Um, I'm surprised you actually have this type of opinion towards it. You know, I thought you would be like, Andre, oh, Blaster Blade is good. Royal Paladins is good. No. I mean, I at least think Mordred has something of at least a Okay, yeah, no. Payout. No, no, no. Because you've been saying this to me since he came out. You have to jank your deck way worse for Mordred than you do for this shit. I mean... Because at least this has a support engine under it. Mordred has fucking nothing. It got two support cards in the set, throwing off the entirety of their support. By the way, that fucking grade 3 triple R is a joke. Fuck that shit. Wow. You can save this for the next set review. You know... I will. I just gotta see Damn this. Damn, Salak gets a 2 out of 5. If we're, if we're talking about next sets or whatever, um, what's it called? Um, they're reprinting Liberator of the Flu as Scrad. And they're printing well, it with the Liberator. It, but that... No, they're reprinting. No, it's retraining, because uh, yeah. reprint would be, it comes out again, and you can't use this card in B-Series because it's a G-Series card. Mm. Uh, but that aside, that Eskrad doesn't matter now, and he probably won't matter ever. What do you uh, calls the top card of the deck? What grade do you give Cancel Off? Zero. You can't give a card a zero. Yeah, it's a great it's a zero. zero just did i hate you what go, go die in a pond let it be known that andre rated solitary night gancelot a full point higher than ryan did <laughs> <laughs> uh next up vbt 05002 uh goddess of the full moon sukuyomi Act, counter boss one discard a card from your hand choose up to three cards with sukuyomi in their card and from your soul <laughs> Draw cards equal to the number of cards chosen. If you drew three cards, look at five cards from the top of your deck, <sighs> put up to two cards from among them on top of your deck in any order, and put the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order. And then auto vanguard <laughs> circle, because that's all one fucking effect. Uh, when you reveal two or more triggers in your drive checks, uh, three of your front row units get 10k power. 
So, this thing good. Yeah, I mean, it pluses and lets you stack things OTT wants to be doing quite easily, actually, especially with the Grade 3 Princess. That lets you soul charge whatever you stack, so you can easily get the Suki's and even soul by turn 3. That's a real bitch when it happens when you're sitting against it. I got the three Suki's mm -hmm. and you're just like, well, I guess I'm dealing with double crits for the rest of this game. Yeah, I mean, I've seen some people like Cough Cough Eric not play any uh, PG's in this deck. Just so, you know, they can stack crits. But, I mean, yeah, this card gets, like, a 4 out of 5, though. Mm -hmm. The only thing is, is it can kind of brick if you don't get the ride chain off. But the ride chain's already pretty good to build consistency. Eh, I mean, the ride chain's probably my biggest objection, just because the grade 1 is full vanilla later in game, and the grade 2 is not that much better. Uh, Goddess of the Full Moon, uh, I think I'm also going to give it a 4 out of 5, just because I can't give it a 5 out of 5, because it requires you to do weird stuff with your deck, and you can uh, miss the full effect. Ryan? What? Goddess of the Full Moon, grade. Oh, um... Eh, 3? It still, you know, has that thing Oracle Think Tank has that makes it really annoying. Uh, next up, we have Blazing Lion, Platina Ezel. Act. Vanguard Circle. Cost. Counter Blast 1. And change this turn's first drive check to look at two cards from the top of your deck, reveal up to one from among them, and put it in the trigger zone. Call one card from among them to rear guard. If your soul has two or more grade threes, change the second drive check of this turn and more as well. The end more as well is a little interesting, grammatically speaking, as far as card effect goes. Well, so the thing about that is... Yeah, it's for premium, but... Yeah. Thoughts on this card? I mean, it sounds cool, but the more I play it, the more I just kind of realize, eh. It's because you suck. Shut up, Andre. You know, it's funny, this is what happens when we do these reviews after the set is dropped, <laughs> Ryan realizes that Ezel isn't all that in a bag of chips. Oh, shut up. On I mean, sh shut up, Lee. You know you went off about how good Blonde was and how good Raven-haired was, and then they both just turned out to be kind of okay. I mean... I mean, I give this card a 3 out of 5. It still won like, tournaments. It won best of, best of one locals in standard for you. Shut up. That's why they call you the king of best of ones. And you know what? I own that title. So. It's still like a pretty decent card. Uh, it can plus. It can uh, dig for triggers. All that stuff's pretty good. Um, I don't think it quite meshes with what Ezel has been set up to do already. So... <laughs> Uh, I give him a 3 out of 5 for Ezel. Great on Ezel. Um, probably like a 4. Alright. Stop making me fucking it up. Um, VBT 05004 Sure Stealth Dragon Jammy Congo. Auto, Vanguard Circle. When placed and at the end of each turn, your opponent chooses 6 cards in his or her hand, discards the rest. Uh, if your soul has a grade 3, your opponent chooses 4 cards instead of 6. I mean, like, when this card was first revealed, it was high because people were like, this is the most broken shit ever, but then you actually... And in premium, right. it was. That's because you could pair it with Rene, who just should have never been created in the first time. But, like, in standard, this kind of... I mean, why don't they just ban Rene? They, they banned Rene with Jammy. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, this card is just otherwise kind of just meh, to be honest. And too bad Rene almost came out like, from the first shadows. First of all, it's slow because it requires a grade 3 for you to actually get the opponent's hand down to critical range. But then second, there are a lot of Excel clans anyway, so this doesn't bother because they're usually having only 4 to 6 cards mm -hmm. anyway, so it doesn't do anything against them. Like, the only thing this card does is be like mildly annoying for like OTT and other protect decks. 
we have talked about a lot how this car just does not have the support structure. It doesn't even have a good backup grade three. There's nothing to finish except the triple R grade two. And that's... Well, here's the thing. When are new Batamas actually going to be good again? Like, because... They, they keep being good in premium, and that's kind of the problem. Oh. What about um, the new Nubatamas that are coming out in the pre-series? We um, don't know anything about them. Actually, we do. You know, we've seen them in the anime once. And so far, they look okay -ish. okay -ish. Yeah, that's probably when Nubatamba will finally get their time in the sun for standard. I mean, as of I right now. I don't think they will, just because they're trying to start another new archetype, and so far there's nothing mind-blowing in it. Mm. You know, why, why doesn't... They, why don't they just stop trying to focus on the archetypes and instead try to focus on building up a clan? Because then Nubatama would be tier zero and uh, premium. So they have to keep hard switching what it does. And every time they try to come back to things that it has done before, it ends up like this, and you end up in a situation where it's fucking broken and uh, premium. Like... Sometimes standard is going to pay for the sins of premium. Yeah. Uh, so we got focus. <laughs> Jammy Congo. Uh, three out of five. That whole discard thing. Yeah. I mean, I guess in premium it works, but in standard it just doesn't work. Um. So probably like a two point five. All right. I'm actually gonna give it a two point five too. Mm. I think it deserves a three. It's decent on paper. On paper. It's, well, the issue with it is that it is decent, and to thrive in a meta like this, you need to be excellent. So, three mm -hmm. is about what you get for being decent. In my book, anyway. Cool. Uh, final VR of the set, we have VVT 05005, Eradicator Gauntlet Buster Dragon. Continuous, <sighs> during your turn, this unit gets 5k power and one crit for each of your opponent's open front row rear guard circles. Act, counterblast, discard a card from your hand, and bind all of your opponent's front row rear guards. You may then move all of their back rows to the front row in the same column. This card good. This, this card, card gets... like really, really good. I'm gonna give this card a five out of five. I love this card. The crit pressure early helps a lot. You can seriously control off a board every single turn. If you have the bird in hand, you just pitch it and get it back. It's so efficient. It like this I love card, this card. This card shouldn't exist. It's this way card too is early. amazing. I mean, honestly, it's pretty good. And its playstyle pairs very well with the tonic drill. But hold on a second. I've always like I've thought this. All right, I've thought. Ezel, the new Ezel is supposed to counter Gauntlet Buster. Not at all. What? New Ezel loses to Gauntlet Buster hard. Because uh. uh, you have no card possession and suddenly I'm burning off your entire board. And no, you cannot out aggro me. Because I'm just going to bind those cards off and aggro you back. Dang. I, got, I don't see a weakness with this card. It gets a 5 out of 5. It should not exist. There are weaknesses with this card specifically, but once you pair it with something like uh, the double R grade 2 and uh, Detonic Skrill, they just go away. Uh, which is amazing. Well, that's the problem. They just go away. That's not a problem. That's what you should do with decks. Decks should be good. Well, yeah, but not to the point of having no weakness. I mean... A deck, if played right, should have little to no overt weaknesses. Because when you say it has no weaknesses, you're saying it has no glaring weaknesses. If there was no way to play around it, it would lose every single time, and you guys know it just doesn't. Mm. I mean, it would win every single time. Anyway, it gets a 5 out of 5 because it is awesome and perfect, and I love it. Ryan? You're only happy because it's good. What if it had a discard four cards from your hand? Why would they do that? Be Why would they make a card intentionally bad? Well, no, it's balanced. It's not balanced at all. That is bad. You're getting rid of cards. That would only be active once in a while. You would be playing into the deck's biggest weakness. Which is? A lack of card possession. Hmm. They should have just made the second skill. And it would be a fucking turn. minus. 
They should have just made the second skill once per turn. That's not even close to the issue. If the, sec Honestly, the second skill, if you activate it twice, that just means that your opponent overcommitted and is an idiot. Honestly, no. You know what they should do? They they should have made it so he it, it would have been so if your opponent um if your opponent's front row is open. No, they shouldn't have done anything. It is perfect. Like they, he just gets like ten k in a crit. It doesn't need to be nerfed because it's good. Well, that's not according to uh, the thoughts of. Uh... No, like it's not oppressive. There's plenty available in the meta right now. If you look at the charts of what's topping, um, there's multiple plans. Five out of five. Yay! Straight fives. <sighs> Can't believe this. <laughs> um, All right, I'm gonna so, count the cards. First triple R is Knight of Truth Gordon, Andre Kell. Blaster Blade specific port, like, it's okay if you have the Blaster Blade, other than that, it's vanilla. I mean, I kind of wish they would stop forcing Blaster Blade down the throat, but that's kind of just asking them to basically uh, say Royal Paladins aren't really Royal Paladins. No, it's asking them to say Royal Paladins don't have to be the Blaster Blade plan. Well, hold I mean, on. They weren't for a while with Alt Mile, but they weren't for a while with Alt Mile. They weren't for a while with Jewel Knights and fucking nothing in the original series except fucking original gods. Well, hold on. Not required blaster blade except, specifically. Except for one thing with Alt Mile, some people splashed in blaster blade. Yeah, of course you would splash in blaster blade sometimes as a matter of choice, especially if you were memeing. But the issue is that people did that out of choice. People mm -hmm. are playing Blaster Blade now because Boucherot is fucking bending their arms behind their back saying, mm -hmm. play fucking Blaster Blade or else <laughs> don't fucking play this plan. Actually, you could play a pure Soul Saver build. At there with, is that. With Force 2 and Nuke the Field. I don't think it requires Force 2 necessarily, but that's, anyway, that's beside the point. Uh, I mean, this card, I guess, stacks, so, like, the Blaster Blades themselves can get pretty big. But, something's like, wrong. Sorry. I mean, I give... I give that card a uh, 2 out of 5. You don't really grade the triple R's, but okay. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> so, next up, Knight of Heart, Tristan. Okay. Makes you, your deck have eight copies of Blaster Blade. It's fine for what it does, but like... Like, it is literally perfect for what it does. Like, it's... Yeah. You could not ask this card to have done a better job. You know, the only thing that's a little bit annoying is the fact that it requires you to have a grade 3 Vanguard, but they probably did that to prevent you from being like... Oh, I can just search this on my grade 2 turn and ride, like, Alfred early or something. Uh, next up, we have the Super Yomi ride chain. I mean, they're good. Okay. Three pluses. Uh -huh. So, four more cards. Um, From three pluses, assuming you get your ride target. <laughs> oh, I mean, that's a plus zero. It's... Oh. Like, they're good if you ride them, but every other point in the game, they're vanilla. All right. like, so the grade 2 at least to become a 12k beat stick? The grade 2 becomes a 12k beat stick, but that is like the exact bottom edge of being something. So, like, I get why they did this. I'm not a huge fan of it. It's more consistent than the Hamske ride chain, that's for sure. Well, that's true, but at least the grade 1 Hamske actually did things you wanted it to. Not and they kind of the almost card. became beat sticks if you had the grade mm -hmm. three. Like, Whereas this kind of just... sometimes people like I saw people playing the Hamske ride chain and not grade three Hamske back in the day. Like that is where I want ride chains to be. Hmm? Wait, hold on. What people played? Oh, the grade three Hamske without the ride chain. No, no, no. The ride chain without the grade three. Oh. Because the grade three was eh, the ride chain, the grade one was awesome. Uh, oh, hmm, okay. But what if you didn't get it off? Then you were slightly bummed about having those grade twos in your deck. Hmm. But at least you had a grade one that filled soul and could be replaced with a grade two at any point in time. Hmm. Uh, next up, we have Advance of the Black Chains, Kahadin. I don't say any topping gold paladin lists play these cards, which is kind of a shame, but like, maybe understandable. I think 
Cotton is probably the biggest disappointment because they really didn't have to make him a discard. Like, they could have just made him essentially a better Vivian, and I don't think anyone would. What the fuck are you doing over there? No. Bad, Andre. Stop that. Oh, it looks cool. You're gonna have to edit that out. No. The world needs to know that you almost put Scare Dick in your deck. Yeah, because Andre's a scared little dick. <laughs> oh, fuck yourself. Oh, I mean, it's kind of good. It's not. It's garbage. Does it only... No, it works on Vanguard or Rear Guard. Yeah, but that costs just for power and crit. Hmm. That activation condition with that cost for power and crit. That is definitional garbage. Alright, what do I want? Right. In, what do I want in my Bermuda deck? Uh Ryan, I'm surprised you didn't have more to say about Cotton. I mean, I just i I expected more out of him. Alright. Uh then we have Hoel. Meh. Meh. I actually agree. Like, the, the triple R's looked good on paper when I first saw them. I was like, oh, these are amazing. And then, like, like, I thought I'd be able to extend the XL circles. Like, how that's. Well, how well, at least I can see the argument for, right? Because at least he makes things pop out as 14s. And that's not bad. But. Also, he makes a 22k column, which is also not bad. Next up, we have Tamahagane. 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 Tamahagane, Tamahagane. 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 I mean, Tamahagane. it's just a shame it doesn't have it doesn't have any synergy Tamahagane. with the uh, doesn't have any synergy with the uh, old support because this kind of this is more for like Fuji Carry Congo. Like. I mean, this thing this thing is kind of staple at the moment just because it's your only way to touch field. Well. It's the only way to touch field that you can choose what gets bounced. That's usually the problem with Kuji Kiri Congo before is that you either had to pay two counter blasts to bounce a column to be able to get the guard restrict you wanted, or you used Dreadmaster, which let the opponent choose what they bounced. I mean, Dreadmaster was still obviously a minus one, but like, this card is just really good for that build specifically, because again, you can just choose what gets bounced. I don't even bounced. think it matters that it is that build specifically. Like, nothing else has the ability to touch anything on field. So. I'm not okay. sure you'd play this in, like, a pure Magatsu Storm deck, though. I think you would. Also, it gets 5k, which is always nice. Mm -hmm. uh, next up, we have Cho'o. He is perfect, and I love him. He is my good boy. Cho'o. Yep. He's the dude what restands and binds the dude. And moves up. Oh! Up if he has this to. one! I will say the counter blast cost is a wee bit heavy. Right. Okay, so yeah, that's real good. So both attacking and defending. All right, cool. So on to interesting double R's and below. Uh, for Royal Paladin, there's Byron and Baron, who are both pretty decent. And yeah, generic. But you don't have room to play them, though, because you have to play, like, Blast and Blades. Exactly, that's kind of the problem. What do they do? Fill up the soul? Uh, Byron uh, gets power and draws, and Baron gives things power and I mean, kill himself. I think Baron, you could play it in a Gancelot deck. I think it's generic enough, but like... Well, the issue that these two both sort of run into is that uh, they're, there's just no home for them. Because they're generic, but they don't work with Soul Saver, so... Like I said, the Baron could work maybe with Gancelot, but you'd probably just rather play the Alfred's. And this is why the Blaster Blade idea sucks. Because these two cards should be good, but you can't fucking play them. Because of Blaster oh. Blade. Also Soul Guiding Elf, which you consider in uh, Soul Saver. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'd even consider it in a Blaster Blade build. I wouldn't. I mean, sue me now, but like... I you, don't, you don't have the room and you don't have the Counter Blast, really. Mm. Okay, then, yeah. Uh, what does it do? Whenever, you're, whenever your opponent plays a Sentinel... If you have a great three Vanguard counter blast one draw card. Oh, okay. Yeah, that works. You yeah. know, some people put it's decent with Soul Saver, yeah. Some people put a uh, Blaster Blade in their Soul Saver builds. Sorry about that, Lee. I mean maybe back then because you don't have a good grade two Rifarger, but now you should play it. 
Eh, I could see it just for a little extra rush potential, but... So what, uh, you should be playing, like, what, Akane, Pongo, K, Benavir? Okay, you should be playing Benavir in your grade 2 line. You should be playing Akane. You should probably be playing that new guy, uh, grade 2. Baron? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I've seen some people run the 12k vanilla, which is interesting. Uh, uh, next up, uh, there are a lot of interesting uh, double R's in this set, actually, because uh, next up we have Uriley. What card is that? What card is that? That's the one that lets you soul charge whenever you look at the top of your deck. So it just makes fucking uh, super. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! It makes it a little more makes, consistent. Makes super. Yeah, you just play the trial deck. You just you just play the trial deck grade one unless you organize top two cards and then just soul charge off of that. Or off of Sukuyomi herself. Yeah. Or any number of things in the deck that just let you look at cards. It's it adds a lot of consistency. The Vanguard effect where you can draw two isn't terrible, which. I don't know how you get in the position in that deck where you don't ride Sukuyomi, but if you don't ride Sukuyomi, at least you don't automatically die. Um, Nakamuran and Libra, meh. Uh, Tendo Congo, shit. Uh, then we have Suo, which is uh, Jammy Congo's specific grade 2 that actually gives him some finishing potential. I can't find room for it in my current deck, and that's playing the discard build. Actually, I kind of think the problem is you sort of have to, just because he's the only out you have for a finisher other than Birdman. Yo, Birdman's you coming. Could, you could replace him with Birdman. Well, Birdman takes up grade 3 slots. And Suo takes up grade 2 slots. Unless if you're just like me occasionally, who just says fuck ratios. I mean, fuck ratios. Ah, uh, don't fuck ratios. Ratios, nothing, are, nothing, ratios are your friend. No, they're not. Yes, they are. Ratios love you. I don't like ratios. Yes, you do. Really? Ratios keep you from getting into trouble. Ratios are that friend that your parents introduce you to because they knew they didn't do drugs and shit. And you're like, I don't want to hang out with this guy. He's a loser. But then he keeps like being there for you and shit. And you're just like, yeah, you're my best friend. <laughs> I think that's called an arranged marriage. <laughs> I don't think you understand the metaphor I'm using. No, I understand. But that's okay. I don't think anyone understood the metaphor. No, I, was using. I understood it. It's just no, like I'm pretty sure you didn't. No, typically parents would introduce you to like a third party and say, "All right, be best friends." You got to be careful, Andre. Oh, I have so much shit here. Because so, I moved all of it aside, so that way we can do recordings. That's Suo. Anyways, uh, I think something fell on the floor. Uh, then we have the Nara Pounding uh, double R's, which are all pretty interesting. Uh, you've got Thunderbird, Dragon, and Rai Rai, which are really good for a budget deck, or if you want to tack them in to uh, get an extra grade free search. The drill works super well with Gauntlet Buster, so I'm not certain why you would. And then there's Zuitan. And Zuitan eats souls. I think it's called Zuitan. 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 Uh, you know, see, seeing as how you pronounce Kokaitis incorrectly. There's a difference. This is Japanese pronunciation. You're making a diphthong with the T. You can't do that in Japanese. What? You can't make a diphthong with a continent in Jap with a consonant in Japanese. That's not how it works. They're syllabic, and they break at the vowels. Zuitan? Zuitan. Yeah. Whatever. Ryan doesn't know what he's talking about. You know what? There's always sounds that humans cannot produce. Did you know that? Yes. Yeah. Can't fucking chirp like a bird no matter how hard you try. Hmm. I was hey. talking more of like the way, you, like you can't pronounce an H like you would pronounce a T. And in that case, I would just write H A H E and pronounce it hate. See, I just pronounced an H like I would a T. Go fuck yourself. No. You first. <sighs> so, anyway.